G'day guys, we've got an implicit differentiation question today where we've got this relationship y squared plus cosine of x is equal to 3y plus 1 and we have to find the first and second derivatives with respect to x in terms of x and y. Now we're going to start with the first derivative dy dx and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to differentiate each of these variables or each of these terms with respect to x. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go well d dx of y squared plus d dx of cosine of x and that's going to be equal to d dx of 3y and d dx of 1 is 0 so we can just leave that off. Now it's very difficult for us to work out d dx of y squared because there is no x in this equation. This d dx of cosine x is quite easy. So what we have to do here, guys, is we have to use the chain rule, per se, to figure out what this d dx of y squared is. And the way this is going to work is we're going to say, well, d dx will be equal to d dy multiplied by dy dx. So the way this is going to work for this function is we're going to have d dy of y squared times dy dx plus or in this case minus the derivative of cosine x is negative sine of x and this is going to be equal to d dy of 3y times dy dx. Cool, so let's evaluate this next part. d dy of y squared is going to be 2y times dy dx and then we're going to minus sine of x and this is going to be equal to d dy of 3y is just a 3 times dy dx. Now what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to group my dy dx's on the left hand side and I'm going to take my sine of x to the right. So what I'm going to be left with is 2y dy dx minus 3 times dy dx is equal to sine of x. Cool. I then can factorize the left hand side by dy dx and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2y take 3. So that will leave me with dy dx is equal to sine of x on 2y subtract 3 and that's our first part of the equation or that's our first part of the question. Okay so now onto the second part where we're looking for the second derivative or d squared y over dx squared. So first of all what we're going to say is d squared y over dx squared is just simply equal to d dx times dy dx. So basically we're having to find the derivative with respect to x of the original of this derivative that we found down here. But you guys hopefully already knew that. This is just how you algebraically set it out. So we're going to have d dx of sine of x on 2y minus 3. Cool. So for this, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to use the quotient rule. And so the way this is going to work is I'm going to have the derivative of the top multiplied by the bottom. So the derivative of the top is cosine of x multiplied by the bottom. Subtract the derivative of the bottom. So d 
dx of 2y minus 3 times the top, all divided by the bottom squared. Cool. So what we're going to do is this part here we're going to say is we're going to repeat the first bit and then we're going to have d dy times 2y minus 3 multiplied by dy dx so that piece there comes from this red chain rule style relationship and then we're going to multiply that by sine of x and that's all over 2y minus 3 squared cool so d dy of this is going to be equal to 2 so let's just rewrite this again we've got so d dy of this is going to be equal to 2 times dy dx multiplied by sine of x over 2y minus 3 all squared. Now what we can do guys is we can replace this dy dx here with our solution to dy dx that we've got from over here. So I can get this and I'm going to stick it in there. Cool. So you can see that I've stuck the sine of x over 2y minus 3 in space of our dy dx. And then just give myself a little bit more room. What I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm just going to simplify the back half of this. Now from here, guys, what we can do is we can break up the fraction into two parts. We can put the 2y minus 3 on this one and this one. Well, the 2 minus 2y minus 3 all squared. Just to make it simpler, we're going to have... Cool. But if it, if it asks us then to leave it as a single fraction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them both 2y minus 3 all cubed, and I'm going to just multiply this top one by another 2y minus 3. So if I want to leave it as a single fraction, what I'm going to do, let's just take that up a bit, and then I'm going to get rid of all the bottom pieces. And I'm going to put a squared here, so I'll make that more visible. There we go. So you can see, guys, that there is a fair bit involved and a lot of algebra and a lot of places that you can go wrong with this particular problem. But let me just go through how I ended up solving it to start with. So we'll drag our question back. What I did to start with is I implicitly differentiated with respect to x each of my components of this relationship. When I had a singular y term like this, so I couldn't differentiate it with respect to x straight away, I used this chain rule style relationship that we came up with over here. And then once I did, once I had done that, I grouped the dy dx's, factorized, and then moved all of the terms to the right hand side. So I was able to come up with a relationship dy dx in terms of x and y. For the second part guys, I implicitly again differentiated each of my components using the quotient rule and here I again used this relationship that I got from here in there and when I was left with this dy dx by itself so I could leave the equation simply in terms of y and x, not dy dx. I was then able to substitute back in my derivative from the first part into the second part. Once I'd done that, it was all about just simplifying it. So once we got to here, it was all about just making sure that it was we presented it in the neatest possible way. So these questions are kind of hard, guys. You need to practice them. They're not something that you can just come up with on the day. I would recommend doing a, quite a few of these. But again, guys, you're going to need to practice most of the parts of math to make sure you're really good at it and it comes naturally. But I would just 
make sure you understand how to do that chain rule style um, dy dx and ddx is equal to ddy times dy dx. Understanding how that works and how you can apply it is probably the best bet to solving these equations. But I hope the video helped guys. If it did, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel get noticed. And leave a comment if you didn't understand it and you want me to explain a part of it again. But until next time guys, just keep plugging away, keep enjoying your maths, and I'll see you again here soon hopefully.